Hi everybody, Zach here, and welcome to the 13th lesson of this RTS tutorial series. In this lesson, we are going to set up our blueprints for the resources. We will do so by creating a parent blueprint, which we'll call the resource master, and by creating two children for the stone, which will be our ore resource, and the tree, which will be our wood resource. Unlike a lot of the videos in this series, after the fifth video that is, I am going to do a little bit more on this title card than usual. I'm going to go over a little bit of the logic that is going to go into this uh, section. I'm going to do so for two reasons. First, at the end of this particular lesson, we won't have anything that we can actually test, simply because we are breaking the material down into the smallest components, so you can see how each component works. Um, and by the end of this one, we just will have anything that can spawn in. We will spawn in material in the next lesson. The other reason is because of the complexity and how this has to be conceptualized, I think. It requires a bit of explanation, and it's easier to do that here than during the tutorial itself. I do expect the material that I present here to be, you know, used as you go through the tutorial so you understand what I mean when I give examples during the actual lesson. So we really need to think about the logic for this section, um, and that's simply because of how the blueprints are set up. So I'm going to go over those real quick, and hopefully it'll make sense. So first, we have the parent, which we're going to call our master. And a parent, in terms of relation to a child in blueprints, just passes on any function or variable or mesh to the child. So the child inherits any sort of value we put into the master file or the parent file. And so our master uh, resource master file or master blueprint is going to store all the common uh, variables that are going to be used across all resources. So for example, it will store our resource name, a resource icon, a mesh, and some information about um, its size and its rotation and some other stuff. Now, this is really controlling a single instance of a uh, resource. So this would be a single tree or a single piece of, or a single rock. And those single trees or those single rocks are created in the children blueprints. As these inherit the, uh, the variables and the features from the master file or the parent, um, we then create, or sorry, not create, but we then input values into the variables that we inherit that are related to the particular resource that we are looking at. So for example, we create um, a static mesh that's empty in the master. In the child, we input a mesh such as the tree. Um, it will also store unique values for an individual resource. And again, thinking about the tree, the texture, sorry, not the texture, the mesh for this one is two separate meshes. We have the tree itself and the leaves. Um, now, the rock is one single mesh. Therefore, I will only be putting one static mesh in the master. A unique value or a unique uh, variable that will be included included, sorry, um, in the child BP for the tree is or are the leaves or the leaf mesh. Now, this, in terms of thinking about it, is a single resource being spawned in. You know, if I dragged the child into the map, I'd be spawning in a single tree or a single rock. Now, when we think about the master and child in relation to each other, we have to remember, yeah, no, sorry, we don't have to remember, we have to consider the fact that it's a single resource being spawned in. The reason we have to consider this is the way we are going to spawn in the resources is by using a spawner that covers an area where that resource can spawn in multiple times. So, for example, if we lay a 25 by 25 grid on our world map, that is the area in which, you know, say 100 trees could spawn, though that would be a very crowded area for those trees. So when you see things like rotation and values 
um, and all of that stuff in the master and then in the child, we aren't actually we're setting what's going to be the value of what shows up in the spawner. We can have a little bit of leeway in terms of manipulating it so we have some flexibility. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, we might want one tree, we might want trees that are bigger um, to have more wood. So we can create functions for that. We don't do that in this section, but we can do that down the road. But I just want you to be aware that if you want to sort of change, not sort of change, if you want to change uh, an aspect of a resource, you do it in the child if it's unique to that resource. If you want to change an aspect that affects all resources, you do it in the master. If you want to change an aspect of how it shows up in the game world, you do that in the spawner. Hopefully that made sense, and what I want you to do is kind of think about this as we go through setting up the master and child. That said, fire up your editor, and I'll see you on the other side. So here we are back in our editor. The first thing I want to do is I want to change our default map. To do so, I'm going to go into my project settings. And I'm just going to move that over to the other side. I'm going to go into Maps and Mode. And in here, I have my Editor Startup. And I definitely want this to be my test map. Now, my game default map, I'm going to set it to the same thing. But, you know, for a completed project, this might be a main menu or something. So, there we go. That's all set. I'm also now going to open up that map. And we can see that we have our sort of test in there. Now... I hate to say this, but at the end of this video, we will not have added anything relatively new in that we can test. So that said, let's get started with the main part of this. We are going to go into our blueprints. We're going to create a new folder, and we're going to name this folder Resources. And in that folder, we're going to create a new blueprint, which will be our parent. So that parent is going to be a blueprint actor and I'm going to name it RTS resource master underscore BP and let's just pop that open just drag and plug it into the correct spot up there and let me just get the things I want to look at open here and actually we're going to do a couple of other things first now that I'm uh, really thinking about it we're going to create a couple of enums or just one enum uh, that will make things a little bit easier on us. On us, Sorry about that. So go to Blueprints, Enumeration, and I'm going to do Resource Level Enum. And this is going to be very similar to our game speed. going to, however, have 6 in here. And I'm going to rank these from 0 to 6. It would be lovely if it let me click. There we go. And I'm just going to put depleted or null. And this one will be our base, unlike the three from before. Going to save it. Going to close this enum out. And we're going to return to our uh, blueprint here. Now, the first thing I want to do in this blueprint is... I am going to, well, get rid of this default scene root. I'm going to add a component. I'm just going to type in scene. I'm going to leave it as such and drag it over there so it's replaced. Get it from the components by compiling. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a component, and that will be static mesh. And I will name this resource mesh, so when I call it, I know what I'm calling. And I'm going to save it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my event graph. Sorry, my, uh, not my event graph, my construction graph, actually. Um, actually, no, I'm going to go to my event graph first, and I'm going to delete these. And I'm going to go to my construction graph. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create a couple of new variables. I'm just going to call these on the components for a second. And the first one I'm going to create is a variable called resource name. And this will be of type string. And I'm going to create a category called resource is a resource legend and I'm going to create a second variable that will go into this resource legend that will be called resource 
again if it would let me type resource icon and resource icon is going to be of type object so you want the one with the little circle here and again this is going to be a legend now in neither of these do we need to set our defaults I am next going to create my booleans I plan to use so the first boolean I want oops, sorry I don't want to click off of that for a second the first boolean I want will be related to our levels so is random level and of course I said this is going to be type boolean and as you know by now I always put these in a bool folder and I want this one to be actually I think I want actually I want uh, the earlier ones to be as well no I don't um, I want this one to be exposed and also I'm just going to compile so I can make this one already a default to selected. I'm going to add in my another boolean which is is random size and again I'm going to compile this and I'm going to not select this one just because there's a bit of an issue with it when we used with the tree and for some reason I did the trees first so I have been thinking about that. Again I'm going to expose it and I'm going to create one more bool which is ran is random rotated. Okay, I know the grammar ain't perfect. Yes, I said ain't. And I'm going to make it a bool yet again. Oh, and expose it. And on this one, I am also going to default it to yes. So, the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to drag off is random level. I'm going to put it there, and I'm going to get it. I'm going to get a branch off of this. In fact, I'm going to zoom in. Hopefully, it will resolve some of the issues some people have been complaining about. Hopefully, I work out getting a better uh, recorder that will actually do all the editing I need to do. So, on this, what I need to do now is I need to actually have a reference. And so, I'm going to create a, um, a reference uh, to the enum we just made. And this is going to be resource level enum ref. And I will, of course, create a references. I can type, sorry about that. References category. And I'm going to type in resource level. And there it is. So I am going to just drag off that and set it on the true. I'm just going to drag it out a little bit. Sorry, I need to zoom out of it myself there. And I'm going to right click between the two and I'm going to do random integer in range and my range for the uh, for this will be 1 to 6 we're not going to use a 0 here in fact I don't plan on using the 0 in the section we will come back to what we can do with it in a later section I'm going to convert this to a byte and I'm going to convert this byte to the enum resource level so I'm just going to type in resource level byte to enum resource level enum and I'm going to just plug it into there. Off the enum, I am going to switch. And you might remember we did something very similar on the um, HUD with our game speeds. I'm just going to send that out for a moment. And I'm also going to drag off this false. I'm just going to plug it into here as well. And I'm going to make this a little bit prettier so I know what I'm doing in terms of where my lines are. Ah, yes, I'm making random noises at you now. Okay, so I need one more uh, variable. So I'm just going to drag off this zero for a second. And I'm, oh, nope, I can't do it that way, sorry. I'll just click create variable. And this one will be resource modifier. And I am actually going to put it into my references. Just Even though it's not a reference itself, it's related purely to that enum. It's not doing anything, and it's going to be of type float. And I'm just going to plug that into the zero there, and because this represents my depleted state, it'll be zero. Actually, I'm going to skip the zero for now. As I said, I'm just going to plug it into the one. And since one is my base level, I am going to label it as one. And the reason I'm doing this is we'll be using multiplication later. So I'm going to control W that... Sorry, I was in the wrong window. I'm going to control W that. 
and I'm going to plug that into the 2, and I'm going to name this oh, 1.2. I have randomly picked these numbers. I have not even tested them to see um, if I like them. That is, I haven't tested them in this version. I have used a similar setup elsewhere, but that was using data sets or data tables. And I'm going to plug that into the 4. And this will be 1.4. Oh, sorry. This will be 1.4. And this will be 1.6. Again, I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to plug it into the 5. And this will be 1.8 and then once again I'm going to duplicate it and plug it into the 6 and I'm going to label this as a 2. Now what I wanted to do is I want it to be set to sorry I want it uh, involved in setting what will be our current resources so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable yet again and this will be current resources so off current resources I'm just gonna plug it into this well closest to middle I have here and I'm gonna put a reroute node in towards the start there and just plug everything else into that reroute node just so it's a little bit neater and tidier than all of it going directly into there unfortunately because we have an even number or really an odd number if you count the zero um, this won't space evenly like it does in our HUD. So I'm going to back drag off of this and I'm going to put an asterisk in and I'm going to do float times float. And I am going to grab this resource modifier and I'm going to plug it into here. As for what goes in here, well, that's going to be what a new variable. In fact, it's going to be in a category that I'm going to place with this uh, current resources variable. Or current with this current resources variable, and I'm going to name that resource is resource value. So make sure I saw that right. I did. And inside of resource value, I am going to have a base resource amount. So what this is doing, as hang on one second, let me just change this over, and I'll explain what this is doing. And I'm going to plug that in. Ah. Oops, it's a little bit neater. Thank you. And I am going to, again, expose this one. And in addition to exposing it, I am just going to compile and save. So what this is doing is we are going to use levels to determine how much resources are actually spawned. The higher the level, the more, the more value of the resources there. So even if we only have one tree on the map, you know, this might represent the fact that this tree is somehow has more bark in it. Um, okay, it doesn't work with trees. So this might represent, you know, one rock might have more ore in it than another rock. Um, or a patch of ore might have more uh, value than another patch of ore in terms of the resources that can be gained from it. So this is setting what the current resource of the... Um, the resource that we're spawning in will be. Now remember, we are using kind of three blueprints to get this all to work. Um, so it's going to be a little bit confusing, and I hope the start video, uh, the start part of this video, or the starting part of this video, sorry, explained that. I know I said I was going to drop those uh, introduction cards, but I kind of figured with this one, the logic I'm using is too hard to explain on the fly. Um, so this is, again, just setting, however, the sort of value the sort of quantity of resources you can get from a single spot. So next I'm going to do is random size. This is literally just related to display. So I'm going to get it and I'm going to branch. So this will change the size of the mesh and nothing more. To get that to work, what I need to do is I need to drag my resource mesh out here and I'm going to get it. And, oh, excuse me, um, I am going to drag off of it and I'm going to set world scale 3D. Just plug into the true. So if it's true that it is a random size, we want to do some stuff here. So to do random size, what I want to do is I'm going to create two new variables. Both will be floats. One will be our min mesh size. And the other will be our max. 
mesh size. And I'm going to put these in a category that I'm going to label our spawn size. Actually, it's not spawn size. It's a resource size. Spawn size will be in a different um, different blueprint redo. So our spawn size. And this will also go into there. And I want to set some defaults here, actually. I also want to expose them. Um, but the defaults I'm going to set for these are just to make sure that you know there is a value in here that isn't zero. Because if it's zero, we're not going to get any resource showing up. So the smallest I want it to be in terms of scale is 0 0.5. So remember, this isn't scales. This isn't a unit of measurement outside of, you know, does our does one unit on the mesh we're using equal one Unreal unit? And you know, it might not. We might want you know things to vary a bit. And I'm going to do 1.10, just to make things a bit interesting, so it's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to drag in this min size, and I'm going to do random float in range. So what this is doing, it's going to get a random number in between my min size and my max size. And off of this, I am going to make vector. Now, instead of making vector, I could split this pin and plug this into there three times, but I just feel like plugging it into the vector three times here. Oops, sorry about that. Move that so it's a little bit more even or closer to the, the set world scale. And I'm just going to drag this a bit out to have a little bit of room when I pull off this false pin in a second. Um, or actually in a couple of seconds, because first I want to drag out a, another branch. And just to make things a little bit neater, again, I'm going to add a reroute node in. And I'm going to drag off this false, and I'm going to plug into this reroute. Again, I'm going to put some more reroutes in just to make it a little bit neater and a little bit easier to follow along. And I'll zoom in for uh, sake of video quality. Oops, sorry, let me just fix that up a tiny bit. So if we don't have a random size, we're going to go on to the next bit, which is to check if the resource is randomly rotated or not. And here again, I am going to simply drag my mesh in, and I'm going to get it. Now, from here, I am going to set world rotation. So world rotation, plug that into the true. You don't need to worry about the false this time, because if it isn't set, it's not randomly rotating. And I am going to get a random float in range. Now the range I'm going to use here, I haven't created variables, and I know I said I don't like hard coding things, but this is fairly simple in terms of the logic and in terms of what it's doing. It can rotate the entire span of the map for all I can. Sorry, the entire, uh, like, it just, I'm going to put 360 and it can span the entire sort of possible rotations. I don't care what way it rotates. You know, the more angles it can rotate at, the, sorry, uh, the better it mu it's going to look. It's going to be less uniform over time. And I'm going to make rotator. And this will be in my yaw or z axis or z axis for my fellow Americans. Joys of living in England, I have really picked up saying z. So plug that in. And there we go. We have our uh, sort of master resource done here. So when the item or sorry, when the single mesh is spawned in, it's going to check, are we getting random levels? It's going to see, you know, if so, if not, we kind of need to set this. So just want to make sure that this is exposed so that I can set it myself if I want to. Actually, sorry, no, I don't want to expose that. I want to expose the enum, because I want to set the enums level. Um, actually, no, I'm also going to expose this. I might actually say I want to put a special value in here instead. So I'm going to expose both of them. So this, if this is false, I can set the enum, which will set something here. Or I can kind of overwrite it, you know, put this as zero so nothing happens, and then set the resources here. It then, or sorry, the resource size here. It then checks if the resource mesh will be randomly sized or not. If it is, it'll pick a float between 0.5 and 1.10 and it will set that to its scale. It will then check, should this mesh be rotated randomly? And if so, rotate it on the z-axis, all possible angles. Um, we don't want it rotating on these. Actually, since 
It, it depends, actually. You might want it rotating on the pitch and roll. I wouldn't want it for the tree, but for the rock, maybe. Um, hmm. Well, we'll think about how to do that in a little bit, but this is just the base setup. We don't need to worry about that quite yet until we know how this looks. So I'm going to compile and save. And honestly, that finishes out our resource master. So if you're not familiar with the idea of children and, or master and children, or parent and children, um, what this is doing is, uh, sorry, what this is, is this will be the base from which all resources are developed. So if we right click it and we hit create child blueprint class. Um, I'm just going to quickly rename this while I'm here. It's going to be um, wood underscore BP. It will inherit all the qualities of its parent. So if we go in here, we go to our construct, you know, this function is literally calling back to here, what's in our resource master. But first things first, let's go back to our viewport. And what we want to do in our viewport is we want to set our mesh. So we're going to just go to our static mesh and we're going to type in tree. And we want tree tree. There's our tree. The next thing we do is we're going to do add component because this is the tree and I put these as separate uh, meshes. And these will be our, this will be leaf mesh. And again, we're just going to look for leaves or tree leaves. And there we go. We have a nice little setup there. We're going to compile it and you see that it's rotated randomly. So every time you compile, it's going to rotate because it's set to randomly rotate. If we go to our sort of uh, upper level here, the class defaults, uh, uh, we'll see that we have all those things we set up in our parent. So we're going to name this resource as wood. And we're going to go into here. You can see it just it did a random reset there. We're going to type in wood again. Or actually, sorry, we're going to type in tree, not wood, because the icon was named tree. We're going to scroll down, find our texture file, and put that in there. And just give me one second, because I want to double check the settings I put on this. So in terms of our bools, I'm going to leave is random level for now. And also because we haven't set actual values to it. And I'm going to do is random rotated. As I said, if I do size, oh, actually that worked. Huh. So I might leave size on. I used to get issues in my test file every time I did size where the mesh wouldn't actually load. So we'll leave that on for now. If we run into that issue that I've reported, then uh, we'll take care of it then. So if you remember in our, so this is why tooltips is important actually. So we're gonna go back and make a tooltip. Um, I realize none of you know why I just said that. The reason I said that is I forgot which one was which. So we don't want to set this one. So set by um, our blueprint, set by VP. We don't wanna set that one ourselves. What we want to set is the base amount. So starting value set by dev for this resource. And in fact, I'm just going to put a default of 10 in here on the parent just to make my life a little bit easier. And the resource modifier, I'm also going to put it as a default of 1 because that is the base level there. And compile that just so that if anything goes wrong that we don't get a zero value here and I am going to then go back here and make sure that my resource uh, current resources is hmm, still set to zero that, that shouldn't be actually it should oh yeah it, it hasn't been run so it hasn't set yet it'll set on begin play so that this will set on begin play this is the base amount it will set with it will pick a random uh, float within here to pick its actual sort of size when we compile it so that height is randomly picked between there. We don't want it hidden. And I just want to make sure that we haven't skipped any of our variables. So in terms of what variables we might have left over, if I go back to my uh, test file for a second and take a look at it. Or sorry, yeah, the test file and take a look. We have our resource name, which we set. We set our icon. Those are our defaults. Yep, everything is set here, so our tree is ready to go. Compile and save. And I'm just going to save this again. 
And we're going to go back here and we're going to create another child cl uh, blueprint class. And this one will be, instead of tree or master, it will be our or BP. We're going to open it up. And in here, we're going to name it or. And we're going to type in or here. We're going to get a lot of things. So we scroll down to find our texture file. We'll set it. We'll do random size again. And again, we're going to set our mesh, which I skipped for a second there. Sorry about that. And I think I named the file rock. No, I did not name it rock. It's no, I did name it rock. That's, that's the one I created. Sorry. Just want to make sure that is the one I created. Yes, it is. It is in the correct folder. So there is our rock. If I hit compile, you're going to see it's going to shift and change. And again, kind of everything in this one is set up outside of whatever class default I want to give it. So if I go back here, or sorry, if I go back to RTS resource or BP, let's go through. I've already set the random. You know, we'll have the default level of it. We can change this as needed. Actually, I might move this later on, um, but we'll see. We'll leave, sorry, when I say move this, I might move this to a different blueprint. I might remove it from the parent and put it in our spawner instead. And then we have our current resources. We have our base amount. And, you know, just as a rock, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and make this 25. I'm going to compile that again. Still picking a size within there. So everything seems good. Now, that is all we had to do for this video. And as I had that introduction, I'm going to pause it here. And later this week, I will be releasing a video where we'll actually spawn these resources and these variables in. Now, I never know why my tree shows up in here, but my uh, rock doesn't. That's always, oops, sorry. That's always confused me. Um, so that said, thank you for joining me this week. Hopefully this was helpful, even though we didn't really get to put anything into the game this time. Um, as always, please, you know, give me any feedback you might have. Let me know what you want to see or you want more of or less of in these uh, tutorials. Likes are always very appreciated, and it lets me know that I'm bringing you uh, content you value. And make sure to hit that subscribe and notify bell so you know when the next tutorial is out. And, as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.